In this hands-on video, we talk about the top iPad OS 13.1 features, including incredible new multitasking, dark mode, external drive support, and more. 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Zugu Case, maker of Amazon's highest rated iPad case. The new Muse case features a robust bumper, industry leading drop protection and design, and an innovative built in adjustable stand with seven different angles. It's going to be perfect for that seventh generation iPad. It can protect your iPad from five foot drops even on the concrete because it comes with a robust bumper and industry leading drop protection design. That is great, but for me, it's all about those seven magnetic angles. It gives you a super secure angle on any surface, flat or not. I mean, just look at all those angles. And there's a long elastic Apple Pencil Pocket, which is perfect for seventh generation iPad users. The Zugu Muse case comes with a free one year warranty, sleep wake functionality, and it's perfect for travelers, businessmen, students, and anyone looking for a durable, dynamic, and sleek iPad case. Special thanks to Zugu Case for sponsoring 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube. Hit the link in the description to get your Zugu Muse case today. Thanks for watching 9 to 5 Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. All right, so let's talk about the first big feature here for iPad OS 13, and that is, of course, the new home screen layout. So you get a new app icon layout, a more condensed grid. You have now a five, five row by six column grid for 30 app icons on the home screen, not including the dock. So that gives you a whole lot more app icons at your fingertips, a whole lot more apps that you can launch right there from the home screen. Now the other big home screen change that you'll see is the new today view. When you swipe over like this, notice how the app icons all condense in. You have your date and time at the top, followed by all your widgets. It looks really good. So good that when you swipe back over and it goes away, it kind of is a little bit disappointing. Um, but there's good news. You can keep the today view on your home screen by going to edit and then enabling the keep on home screen switch at the top. So just enable that like that. And then you can see it also gives you the option to pin favorites at the very top of the today view that will stay permanently there. Uh, so I'm gonna drag a few up there at the top and then I'll just tap done once I'm complete and once I'm happy with the changes. All right, so now you're gonna see the today view stays on the screen even when I swipe and then you have those three favorites at the top. So when I swipe down, the rest of the items disappear, but those three pinned favorites at the top stay there just like that. And I can always access the rest of my widgets just by swiping up. So what do you think guys and gals? I think this is a great looking new home screen interface for iPad OS. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. All right, so another one of my favorite new features in iPad OS 13 is the floating keyboard because you know how difficult it is to try to finger type with the keyboard this large on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch version and forget about trying to type with one hand on your iPad Pro. It ain't happening. But in iPad OS 13, if you long press on the dismiss button and select floating, that reveals the new floating keyboard interface in iPad OS. And this allows you to drag this little keyboard all around. You can put it in the desired location, even if it's smack in the middle or on the side of your display. And that allows you to type with one hand with ease. It's so nice. It's definitely one of my favorite features. What do you guys think? Is this one of your favorite features? Let me know. Now, what's really nice though, is it gives you swipe capability. Well, I shouldn't say swipe quick path capability as well, quick path typing, just like on the iPhone. And this allows you to swipe between letters to spell out words in quicker fashion. Now let's talk about that desktop or so-called desktop class browser on the iPad. Uh, it is actually better. Uh, for instance, if you go to youtube.com, it's gonna give you just full screen, regular YouTube. It's not gonna try to give you the mobile version. Uh, so this is nice. The user agent issues seem to have been addressed a lot. Uh, and even sites like Squarespace work better. Google Docs works better, although it's still, to me, not a great experience. Uh, it just doesn't, work like you would expect on an iPad. Just like in that example, holding the delete key doesn't delete the, you know, the line of text there. Um, but you can do some really cool things. Like you can go in, you can draw, you can add your various shapes to your documents. So it does support 
more features than the previous iOS 12 version of mobile Safari did, but it's still not fully there yet in my opinion. It's usable, no doubt, but I, I think there's still a lot of room for growth when it comes to desktop class browsing on an iPad. So I'm interested to hear what you guys have to think about that. Let me know. But one thing I will say, one thing Apple definitely got right is Safari downloads. It is so nice to be able to download any file that you want to, oh, I said that weird file, file. Uh, it's so nice to be able to download any file that you want to on the fly, just like that. And you can of course go into the files app find your downloads folder and see the status of that current download. You have a nice download manager within Safari so you can see the current status, the, the data transfer rate, all that right there within that little download manager. And of course you can stop a download, you can delete a download, etc. Now I do have a little shameless plug, well not really a shameless plug, but this keyboard is amazing. I can't wait to review it. It is the Keychron K2. It's a wireless mechanical keyboard. I will have a full review of that. They have not sponsored me or anything like that. I just had to give a shout out to that, uh, to that product because it is awesome and I've been using it for the past couple of weeks with my iPad. And I want to talk about keyboard shortcuts. That's kind of why I mentioned it. With iPad OS 13, you get all sorts of new keyboard shortcuts for Safari, for the Files app. So one of the new keyboard shortcuts allows you to download links or add to reading lists by combining keyboard shortcuts with a tap on your screen. So holding the shift and tapping adds to reading a list or holding option and tapping adds to your downloads. It's a really cool new addition, but it doesn't stop there. Of course, the files app gets a whole bunch of new keyboard shortcuts as well. For instance, you can connect to a server using command K. We'll talk about servers a little bit later. And like iOS 13, iPadOS 13 brings forth the ability to both install and manage fonts directly from the settings app here. So it right here is directing you to the app store to download a font. And then once you download that font, you can manage it within the settings. Let's talk about multitasking. Now you can invoke slide over apps from either side, the left or right side of the display. So here I invoked a slide over app on the left side. Previously, I couldn't do that. And let's show the right side of the display some love. You can invoke a slide over app on the right side as well. But here's a really cool new feature. Now you have multiple apps in slide over. So not just one slide over app, but multiple apps. So let me drag reminders right on top like that. I'm gonna drag something else here. Let's take this one, notes right on top of reminders and the files app. Let's see what up next. Let's take, uh, I don't know, let's take Fantastic Cow, put that on top. Let's take another third party app, Ulysses. Let's show Peacock some love. So you can just continue to stack more and more apps on top of each other, just like that, thanks to the new slide over updates in iPad OS. So, what does all this mean? Well, it means you can switch between apps like this right in the same slide over window. So all the apps you have open in slide over, you can easily switch between them. You can hide them away. You can bring them back with the tap. It really is just the tip of the iceberg though. We're gonna talk a lot more about slide over. So we can move slide over apps, of course. The whole stack is right here. And of course you can switch between them. But that's just elementary stuff. Let me show you how you can swipe between slide over apps. You know you can swipe between full screen apps like this using the little home indicator at the bottom. But did you notice that slide over, it too has a home indicator. You can swipe on that to switch between the applications in the stack, either left or right, just like that. Very, very nice. And you can do it on either side of the display, by the way. What do you guys think about that? Let me know. Now let's talk about the slide over app switcher because you know you have an app switcher for full screen apps, but you have an app switcher for slide over as well. Just swipe up from the home indicator on the slide over stack and there you go. Look at all those applications right there, allowing for direct access, no swiping through. You directly decide which app you wanna to switch to in your slide over stack, thanks to the slide over switcher. So smooth, by the way. Running on the 2018 iPad Pro one terabyte version. Okay, so let's talk about closing slide over apps. So open up the slide over switcher 
and to close an app, you do just like you would on the full switcher. You just simply swipe up like that to get rid of the app from the slide over switcher. Super simple, super easy. Now, what about moving slide over apps to full screen or to split view? Let me show you how to do so right now. All you need to do is drag this little indicator here. And if you drag it over to the left side, you can dock it in a split view, the right side split view, or if you pull it up to the top, you can make it full screen like that. So you get it? It's really easy actually. So top, full screen, left or right is split view. So let me show you again here. Let's just grab one of our applications. Which one should we choose here? We'll choose one of my favorite apps, Ulysses. So we'll drag. We could put it at the top for full screen, but we won't do that. We're gonna drag it to the side and let go. And there we go. We're in a split view with Ulysses and with things. So let me give it one more shot here. So we'll pull our slide over stack into view. And this time we'll drag PCalc and we'll just replace the current app like that. So if you wanna replace a split view app, you just drag it on top of that split view app like that. Super simple, super easy. And we'll do the same thing, but the opposite side here with notes, replacing things. Pretty powerful stuff, wouldn't you agree? Now in iOS 12, you could do split view from the same app as long as that app was the Safari app. <laughs> so only Safari had this capability in iOS 12, but on iPad OS 13, you can do split view with side-by-side -side windows from the same app across a multitude of first-party and third-party applications. So here, for instance, with the Reminders app, you can drag a list over to the side and create two Reminders windows with two different lists, or the same list for that matter. But here you can drag one item to the other list, put eggs in my personal list. Doesn't belong in games, that's for sure. That would be weird. All right, so here is the Ulysses app. So I'm gonna take a snippet and drag that over just like that. And there we have two Ulysses windows running side by side. So you could probably imagine how incredibly useful this could be when doing research, when writing a paper or whatever the case may be. Now you can also mix and match the same apps in multiple spaces. I know that sounds complicated, but let me explain. Let me show you what I mean here. So I'm going to take this Safari tab and I'm going to open up my Reminders app. And there I have a split view space with Reminders and Safari. Now I have another Safari tab and I'm going to combine that with Ulysses. So you can see I have two Safari windows connected to two different applications. So here's a third, I have Safari and Notes. So I have Safari and Notes, Safari and Ulysses, Safari, you know, you get the point. The updated app switcher will show all spaces and window names. So you have Safari Reminders, Safari Notes, Safari Ulysses, but notice the window names for each individual window. For here, Safari, you have Electrek and Reminders and it displays the other windows as well. Now App Expose can be accessed by long pressing on an app icon and tapping on show all windows. This will show every window pertaining to that particular app. So for a Safari, you see all four Safari windows. Some of them are paired with other apps in spaces, but it's going to show all the Safari windows that you have available. Now, here's what's cool. If you already have an app displayed, you just simply tap on that app in the dock and that will open up Expose. So for instance, I have things open there. Just tap on it, App Expose. Now in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice the plus button. That will open up a standalone window of the app that you're viewing. So for things, I opened up a standalone things window. I can actually close that out right from this interface. And then you notice there in the upper right hand corner, reopen close window, just tap it like that. It reopens that last window. Super nice feature. App Expose is where it's at as far as managing all of your windows on an app by app basis. It's a really powerful new multitasking feature in iPad OS and you definitely want to get used to how to use it. Now, what if you want to multitask with an app that already has windows open? Well, iPad OS thinks about that as well. So I'm going to drag up Safari right there and bam, it's going to show me all the other open Safari windows across all the various spaces so that I can quickly access any of those windows if I want to. Of course, I can open up a standalone Safari window by tapping the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. But here, it allows me just to pull in one that's already open, especially if I know there's a window out there that I want to open. That, folks, makes it so easy, easy as pie, like they used to say back in the day. 
All right, so let me give you one more example. Let's do reminders this time. I have a couple of reminders windows already open, so it's gonna give me those as an option. I can, of course, hit the plus button, but I'm gonna choose this one. All right, so in iPadOS, you can drag to create windows. You can drag URLs, you can drag email addresses. So let's just drag over this URL. What are we gonna find here? Oh, 9 to 5 Max YouTube channel. How'd that get there? Have you subscribed yet? Go ahead and do that. And you can also drag notifications to multitasking. Just like that. That's really, really cool. Okay, so let's switch gears a bit. We're gonna talk about file app enhancements. The first thing you're gonna notice here is a new column view. And that gives you a nice visual look at the directory structure. And then there's a new kind sort option. Not kind as in be kind, but kind as in type. <laughs> that was so silly. All right, there's also enhanced metadata. And uh, this is gonna be super useful for photos. Not much information here in this example, but uh, if I had a photo there, it would give you all sorts of, sorts of data like uh, um, shutter speed, things like that. You also have quick actions, so you can go in, you can mark up, you can uh, rotate right there on the fly, similar to what you can do in Mac OS. You'll also notice new search filters in iPad OS 13. So here's one for MP3 audio. I tap that, all the MP3 files display just like that. All right, and then there's SMB access, so you can connect to an external server. In this example, I'm connecting to a Synology NAS with SMB enabled and it connects just like that. So I use a Synology NAS to store backup copies of videos, and these videos are usually fairly large, so we're not gonna wait for that to play. Nobody got time for that. All right, so let's talk about zipping and unzipping compressing files. You can now do that within the Files app, so compress that file, and then I'll decompress or unzip, or uncompress, sorry about that. This video is long, I'm getting slap happy, folks. All right, so let's talk about external drive support. So I'm gonna plug in this external drive. I don't know what's on this drive, actually. Oh, so it's a install macOS Catalina beta. Nonetheless, that works for us. We're gonna just tap on that. And you can see, you can browse, browse this drive with no problem. So that shows you it works. Here's the thing though, I'm gonna show you, I can drag one of my files from iCloud Drive over to this external drive. And this would work with an SD card as well or any sort of other external connection, SSD, whatever the case may be. And then I can drag from the external USB drive back to iCloud drive. So that's a pretty powerful new addition to the iPad. Can we all let out a collective, finally, finally, about time. Now let's talk about improvements to the Photos app. I have talked about this so much over the past few months, and I'm not gonna really go into it super in depth right now because you've heard it before, but basically the Photos app is amazing for its editing capabilities. There's so many new editing tools for both photos and videos. Um, so you can turn effects on or off. There's all sorts of new effects. You can adjust the intensity of the effects. You can adjust the intensity of filters. But here's the really cool thing video you can do all the stuff you can do with photos to your video so you can apply effects adjust the intensity of effects you can zoom in while you're editing which you couldn't do before either on photos or videos you can edit videos at all in ios 12 basically but now you can do all that and you have all these crop tools so you can go in you can adjust you can flip um you can adjust the aspect ratio it's just a crazy amount of customization and all of this is non-destructive. Now, Apple Pencil users will be happy to know that there is reduced latency with the Apple Pencil in iPad OS 13. So that's going to make drawing feel all that more natural, annotating feel all that more quick and precise. I didn't really notice anything, but I'm sure those that use your Apple Pencil a lot will probably notice something. All right, so there's full page screenshots. You can just swipe up like that to take a screenshot with your Apple Pencil, by the way, that's a really cool feature. But as you can see, you can enable a full page screenshot and then annotate that screenshot using the newly redesigned markup interface. So I can draw a circle around this and point to it and say, hey, look at that. You need to do something about that as soon as possible. You can also change the opacity and then you can share with your friends, family, or colleagues. You're probably wondering where was dark mode until now? Well, I saved it to the end 
because I talked about it for so long in our iOS 13 overview. But you can see dark mode here on the iPad looks great. You get dark widgets, you get a dark wallpaper, you get a dark dock, you get dark first party apps, and you get dark third party apps. Here is things looking really great in dark mode. You can switch to light like that using the little control center shortcut. Make sure you watch your iOS 13 video if you really want to hear Jeff Benjamin wax poetic over dark mode, because let me tell you, I definitely spend some time on it talking about the ins and outs of dark mode. But here you can see two apps side by side. They both enable dark mode right there on the fly using that control center shortcut. It looks great. Now for the very first time on an iPad, you get access to home screen quick action shortcuts. Now this isn't 3D touch, it's not even haptic touch because there's no haptics on the iPad, but it's sort of like long press touch or shortcut touch, I don't know, but it allows you to access shortcuts from the home screen and that's a good thing. Now the new three finger cut, copy and paste gestures are great for the iPad's large display. So you pinch in once to copy, pinch in again to cut, pinch out to paste, Swipe left to undo and swipe right with three fingers to redo. Now we've already talked extensively about Apple Arcade, but let's talk about it again because for the first time, iPad users get to join in on the fun thanks to iPad OS 13.1. So Apple Arcade, here's the gist. For $4.99 a month, your entire family gets access to nearly 100 games or 100 games or so, give or take a few. Uh, but these are excellent games. A lot of them are really good, high quality games. And I think you guys are going to like it. For instance, one of my favorites, Sneaky Sasquatch. The great thing about Apple Arcade, you can play it on your iPhone, take it with you, and then come home, pick right up where you left off on your iPad or your Apple TV. So uh, don't look at my Game Center name, please don't. Okay. So with Sneaky Sasquatch, I picked right up where I left off. So I'm going to go over and holler at this little bear. Oh, no. Yeah, sh no, no. Yeah, you got to tap that. There we go. Great game, by the way. I'm just sort of used to playing it with a controller. Speaking of controllers, iPad OS 13.1 brings Xbox and PS4 controller support to the table. So now you get much better control than those sort of rinky dink made for iPhone controllers. Not to, not to diss the made for iPhone controllers of yesteryear, but there is nothing competing with an Xbox or PS4 controller, in my opinion. Now, you do also get mouse accessibility support in iPadOS 13. Obviously, Apple doesn't want its users to go out and use this because they bury this thing deep within the accessibility settings. So you can see I'm going through and I'm going to pair the Logitech MX Master 2S, just tap pair, and it's paired. So now you see the little cursor, I won't call it a mouse cursor, it's like a circle thing, but that cursor, you can customize the color, you can customize the size of it, and you can use this basically to replace touch input. So that means I can use it as if I was tapping the screen or swiping the screen, just like that. Now for the record, I don't plan on using my mouse with my iPad on a regular basis, especially in its current state. But I think the fact that Apple even made this available really is good news for those that want the iPad to do more, want more precise control. This is a great step in the right direction, even though it's relegated to accessibility settings. Now, once Catalina launches, you'll be able to use your iPad with Sidecar as a second Mac display. Now you can do so wired or wirelessly. And some creative apps will even allow you to use the Apple Pencil as input. We'll have much more on this once macOS Catalina launches in October. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at what's new in iPad OS 13.1. What do you guys think? Be sure to like and subscribe if you appreciate this video. An extra special thanks to Zugu Case for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Zugu Case makes the Muse Case an absolutely legendary case for iPad users because it includes a built-in seven angle adjustable stand and it's built to last with industry leading drop protection that'll make it so you just don't have to worry about protecting your iPad. And the Muse Case features built-in Apple Pencil storage which will prove to be extremely handy for 7th gen iPad users. Check the link in the description where you can find the Zugu Muse case in a variety of different colors. Special thanks to Zugu for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.